Welcome to the Unusual History of Everything, the podcast that uncovers the unusual history of everything around us. I'm Karen Lacey. And I'm Melanie Dellis. On this episode, we take a look at sneezing and the importance of protecting your immortal soul. Uh, <laughs> Kazoon tight, or <laughs> God bless you. Ancient Rome and the Middle Ages seem to be the parents of a whole host of superstitions many people practice today, carving crosses into Brussels sprouts, the fear of the number 13, and today's topic, sneezing out your soul. (laughs) You don't typically think about your soul shooting out of your nose or mouth whenever you sneeze, or, or maybe you do, but back in the Middle Ages, it was a real concern. I kind of understand that because lots of things can fly out of your nose and mouth when you sneeze, so why not your soul? Sure. (laughs) Sneezing is your body's natural physiological defense reflex when there's a foreign particle irritating the lining of your nasal cavity and your body wants it gone. Or if you're one of the 18 to 35% of people in the world who sneeze whenever exposed to sudden bright light. That's totally me. Every time I go outside in the sun, I sneeze three times. So does my dad. Mm -hmm. My mom doesn't though. Interesting. And neither do my kids. That's weird. That is a little bit weird. Or are you guys weird for not sneezing in the bright light? I do have a compassionate yawn, which is not the same (laughs) thing. But every time someone yawns around me or even I hear the yawning. Yeah, you have to yawn too. I end up yawning too. And my six-year-old has now discovered that. And it's awful. But no, I do not sneeze when exposed to sunlight. I burn. I burn. You mostly. (laughs) You have that Irish skin. That's why. Right? Okay, well, I mean, I'm not saying that your soul is a foreign particle that's irritating your nasal cavity, but maybe it tickles it a little bit, and that's why we have to sneeze. Perhaps. And you risk it leaving your body. Oh. Well, when someone sneezes, it's not unusual for someone to say, God bless you. Most people think it's about just being polite, or maybe it's just a religious thing, or it's a way of asking God to keep you alive. Because when you sneeze, your heart stops. The first two are right, but the last one, it's only half right. People are asking God to keep you alive, but your heart does not stop when you sneeze. That's a myth. Here's what's going on in your heart when you sneeze. The intrathoracic pressure on your body increases, which decreases the blood flow to the heart. To adjust to this, the heart changes its normal beat for a second, but the electrical activity does not stop. Thank God. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Ah, There's a little pun there. The God bless you tradition stems from a variety of fears straight out of ancient Rome in the Middle Ages. People back then were always dying of various diseases and plagues. For example, the bubonic plague ravaged Rome from 590 to 610 and did the same in the Middle Ages. So if someone sneezed, everyone's minds went to contagious disease before they went to something like allergies or sudden bright lights. Imagine you sneeze and then the next day you're dead. That's sort of what it was like back then during these plagues. People sneezed, and they thought it contributed to you dying. It's not unlike today when you sneeze or have to blow your nose and someone's like, COVID. (laughs) Right, like God forbid you cough because you like swallowed wrong or something. People are like, oh my God, COVID. Like seriously, it's so easy to understand. It totally is. How it was back then because... Mm -hmm. People are generally paranoid about that stuff. Yeah, and it was such an unknown. You didn't really know what was going on. Much like COVID. And I would think of today, we actually know the processes of like germs and sneezing. And we remember all those news stories where they were like, this is how far that, you know, those things like travel. And you're like, wow, I really did not want to know that. Right. Thank you. (laughs) And you're like, is six feet really enough distance? I mean, yeah, remember when they were like when we were still in quarantine, the news people were like, okay, even if you're outside wearing a mask, you have to stay like at least eight to 12 feet away from the next person because the wind will blow it. And if you sneeze, it, that's how far it goes. And like they showed you diagrams I of know. like, I was like, what? I was like, thank you so much for scarring me for the oh rest my of my God. life. Yeah. I mean, I get it. Yeah. I, I still to this day don't like to ride in elevators with other people for fear that they're going to sneeze and I'm going to be in, a, in in confined space. Oh, just yeah. saying. But I mean, imagine how many times that's happened to you in your life and you're fine. Never on an airplane. You always get a cold on an airplane, though, I have to say. Every I've time. never I've never been sick on an airplane. Oh, I, don't, I can't even count how many times I've flown somewhere and then I have a little cold afterwards. My mom is the same way. I think that, you know, you guys are just sensitive. Perhaps. I am very, very sensitive. sensitive. I am. Yeah. I, maybe I'm just 
not not sensitive <laughs> you're very you're very cold person I'm in very, terms of your your sensitivity yeah. the germs are afraid of me they're and totally they stay afraid. Away. <laughs> you're intimidating them <laughs> i'm intimidating the germs i give them the look <laughs> well let's go back to rome and that bubonic plague right yes let's so rome's bubonic plague epidemic saw sick people dying while coughing and sneezing so pope gregory the first thought that people said do stay javet i think that's how to say that god help you after a sneeze, it would protect that person from dying. So being the superstitious types, that's just what the Romans did. And it carried through to the Middle Ages. It was their small way of feeling like they had some control over disease-infested times. So in a way, it was about being polite. The Talmudic text, the Mishnah, the first major written collection of the Jewish oral traditions, which was compiled in circa 500 AD, also points to thanking God for keeping you alive after a sneeze. But it also says that if a woman sneezes, then it's a sign that she's about to get her period. So it is a tad confusing, or yeah. at least it was to me. <laughs> I would say, yeah, I could, I could sneeze and it has nothing to do with my period, but okay. Same. And what about... The men, what does it mean for them? I know, they're going to get their man period. They're getting their sympathetic... Sympathetic man period. Man period. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if that's actually what it said? It doesn't, by the way, but it would be funny. The Japanese people have a different take on the sneeze. For them, it means someone is saying nice things about you. And the Turkish people have a very interesting response to a sneeze that all of you Mr. Spock fans out there will enjoy. They say, Kok yasa rahat yasa, which means live long and prosper. <laughs> But does that predate Mr. Spock? <laughs> yes, it does. I've researched it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Really. <laughs> Another reason for saying God bless you has to do with the devil. The people of the Middle Ages were constantly being told all about the devil and so developed a nice fear of him, which, you know, totally makes sense. Mm hmm. They began believing that when someone sneezed, the devil would see the opening of your mouth or nose as an entryway into the person's body and fly right in. But if someone said, God bless you, it would stop the devil in his tracks and keep the person safe. Mm, like a barrier around totally, you, like a bubble. Totally. Because your nose holes are always open. So right? why couldn't he just come in like anytime he wanted? He's got to wait for a sneeze. Maybe he can only get in through the mouth. What about the ear holes then? It's got to be yeah, the you hair. Get the ear holes. It's got to be the hair. In the Hair ears and the nose. That's got to be it. Right. The little hairs in your nasal cavity that protect things or like collect things from mm -hmm. flying into your That's lungs. That's what it is. And the devil just doesn't like that. It so. collects the devil. It prevents the devil. Yeah, he doesn't like that. He's like, ew, gross. I don't want to go in there. <laughs> I could do fire and brimstone all day, but I don't like people's nose hairs. <laughs> you never know. I mean, he could be finicky. You Who never knows? know. Well, going back to the devil and being stopped in his tracks... This is also when covering your mouth and nose when you sneeze came into play. It had nothing to do with protecting the other person from no. your particles of no, nobody diseases. Cared. No, 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 nobody even thought about that. Nobody they even thought just about like, that. We have to stop the devil from coming in, so we're yeah. covering up. So by doing so, by covering your nose and mouth, you prevented the devil from entering your orifices. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally going to tell everybody that. I'll sneeze, cover my come. mouth, and be like, I'm not protecting you. I'm protecting me. I'm protecting myself from the devil. Oh, that's the whole thing with masks, right? Mm -hmm. We should, we should, you know, I'm surprised masks didn't come around earlier to protect yourself from the devil. But covering your mouth and nose when sneezing did one other thing. It kept your soul inside your body. Since ancient times, people believed that the soul was made of air and slept inside a person's head. I totally thought that, <laughs> like this whole time. Did you? Because I, I didn't. I know. <laughs> I didn't being sarcastic? And my soul is sleeping inside. Because I wasn't brain. sure there for a second. I was like, wait, <laughs> is she being serious? Because, like, no. I am not. I am not being serious. <laughs> so if you sneezed, you risked blowing it out of your body by accident. So the blessing and covering up would keep everything nice and intact. Some cultures thought that if a person who was afflicted with demons or evil spirits sneezed, those bad guys would fly out of the sneezer and attack someone else. Yet another reason for a blessing in covering your mouth and nose holes, just in case. I've never thought about my nose being like away from my soul or my mouth being away from my soul to come out. But I did think like when you're coughing really hard when you're sick, mm -hmm. like I'm going to cough up a lung. I actually thought you could cough up a lung when I was a kid. Well, if you think about sneezing and the pressure, right, 
if, okay, just say your soul is sleeping inside your head. Mm-hmm. Just when you sneeze, it comes from your your lungs, your thorax, right? So you're, it's not coming from your brain. So it doesn't really make sense. Like I think I would think that the people back then would even kind of figure that out. Like it's coming from your your stomach, your lungs, your chest cavity, and out your mouth. Not like coming from your brain. There's no air in there. Well, I guess there is some air in your some people's brains. <laughs> well, but it also <laughs> kind of out. it also kind of goes back to a misunderstanding of the body and how like I mean, even ancient Egyptians, yeah, they didn't think the brain was very important. Yet we now know how important the brain is in terms of personality and day to day and thinking and didn't all that other ancient stuff. Ancient Egyptians think the soul was in the heart. I think it had, like, and that's the why heart, they left the heart. Well, the heart has the to get like weighed. Because it gets taken mm-hmm. out and it gets weighed to be like can against you... a feather. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but they I mean, scrambled the brain up they to totally get it out, did. but they left the soul inside the mummy. Yeah. Well, I think the hearts were taken out and put in a canopic jar, and sometimes I think some of the different dynasties or whatever would put it back in. Mm. But it's uh, yeah, but so it would not it would all of them did it. Yeah, because it won't so mean it was so many so many like right. thousands of years, and they always would change it. But yeah, the brain wasn't seen as important, mm-hmm. so it's. I kind of think in an interesting way, they're like the bra- the soul is sleeping with the brain. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they'd move forward with this idea of the brain's actually more important than we think. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Yeah. So it's kind Very of cool. kind of cool if you think about it that way. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, that brings us to the end of our episode. You can follow the Unusual History of Everything podcast on Instagram at the Unusual History of Everything and on Facebook at the Unusual History of Everything podcast. Find our show notes on www.musecuratorial.com. The Unusual History of Everything is written, produced, and directed by Melanie Dellis and Karen Lacey. New episodes air every Tuesday on all podcast outlets. Be sure to subscribe to us so you never miss an episode and leave us a review. You can also see photos from our episodes and more on our website, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks for listening. I'm Melanie Dellis. And I'm Karen Lacey, your host for The Unusual History of Everything. Da 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 da